now. Our radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday, April 10th, 2022. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have a co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. Hey, I think that's me. It is, every week. And our guests today are George Brown, the two and a half, from formerly from Brooklyn, the John Richards from over the sea in London, and Slew Suffer. Welcome, Slew Slew. <laughs> Slew, Slew Foot Shoe. Uh, Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you get the feeling that you're the only non believer in town, well, you're just not. In Knoxville, here in the middle of the Bible Belt, we have a group of over a thousand of us. And we'll tell you more about that group after the mid show break. Wombat, well, what's on our topic list we today? Got, we got various topics that we're going to be covering today. We're going to be including, and I'm going to try to help John Richards by looking at my camera a little bit more often, too. How about that? <laughs> uh, that's one of them. The second one is uh, what to do as an atheist when your friend becomes a born again Christian after formerly being atheist and how do you react to that and how do you what can you do to uh, assuage any fear that they may have based on your reactions or other reactions from other atheists we'll get a roundtable discussion on how we'll how we feel about that and then we'll go into narcissism which has always been a fun topic on the show and figuring out if it's a good gateway drug outside to get out of religion like why worship Mm -hmm. a god when you could just worship yourself right is not going to be interesting uh before we get into it i think we should have a nice little round table what you've been doing what you've been up to let's throw it up to our own john richards how you been since last week oh well as usual i've been scheming <laughs> and and okay. with my my attempts to take over the world right how's that going <laughs> yeah <laughs> well it's going all right so thank you very much so you uh, just had your first panel discussion post scan post yes. global atheist news how'd that go GAN review. Yeah, it went very well. And thank you for being one of my panelists. You were brilliant. Anytime. And uh, I had some other brilliant panelists as well. And later on today, we are doing uh, episode two. And uh, this week, there's been a great deal of religious news, news of how religion harms humanity. And there's been 30 items that I reported on in Global Atheist News yesterday. We won't have time to discuss them all in the panel, but I hope you'll be able to be there, Ty. Wonderful. I'd love to be there. Also, uh, where can we find, you know, so we can catch up, where can we find like the main channel? Would you mind plugging that real quick? Yeah, sure. Free Thought Productions is my channel. Fantastic. And it's growing steadily day by day. I've now got a producer to help me with the, the shows. And uh, I've also got um, a growing audience so i'm I'm really really rather pleased but in in addition to this you may remember my main project my big idea okay which i'm i'm calling free thought city right and it's 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 a it's a, a an online facility for people like us who do webcamming and it's a sort of a social medium but face to face nice yeah and that's we now have a sponsor we now have somebody who's investing in it so we've got enough money to actually launch the thing you know post-covid that's the first time i've not immediately cringed when someone said face to face so i know we're trending towards good things again it's nice Mm -hmm. yeah 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 Yeah, yeah. we were all forced go ahead george brown okay he's just um john i i want to know the nature of your investor and his investment or her investment in other words is this a business do you have like advertising and products to sell and stuff like that this is a business but yes it's not an american style business we're not interesting we're not we're not forcing products down people's throats like happens to you know you poor americans so there will be no um intrusive advertising it, it's a virtual city so you will see adverts as you go about your business 
you will see, you know, on the bus stops and things, you will see the normal sort of um, what you might call uh, background adverts. There's but a they're, very, they're, sorry not to interrupt. I so apologize. Like Beecham pills like that. <laughs> if you like, yes. <laughs> There's a very funny video on YouTube right now of, and Slu, you've probably seen this before, of the metaverse with Zuckerberg, who's yeah. literally going through his virtual world and yeah, trying to I explain haven't... why ads are a good thing. And like yeah. why they're going to be on bus stops and like billboard signs in the backgrounds, but yeah. never in well, your face. Here's oh, the wow. thing. Here's the thing. If ads were a good thing, mm. you wouldn't be able to buy your way out of seeing them on YouTube, would you? Ah, interesting. That's one approach. <laughs> Other approach is not. I, I was worried you might might be starting up your own university or trying to sell steaks or something that nature <laughs> NFTs. there you go uh, i love trump yeah <laughs> john That's richards nice one last question too i know if i don't know if the pun was intentional but like is an audience where like a group of people are in awe the same thing as an audience which is like the american version where you just like have an audience <laughs> that's listening to you no? okay. uh, uh, i'm not going to apologize for my english accent fair enough fair enough fair enough we'll we'll stick to american here slew how you been? It's good to see you. I've been doing all right. Does your shirt say got rats? It says got crabs. It's the Joe's Crab Shack thing. <laughs> got it. Got it. Got it. I didn't know if it was got carrots or whatever. I knew it was got something. Anyway, how you been since the last time we saw you? It's been a while. And uh, we're been doing pretty good. Show. I have been uh, working on some of my content and um, trying to edit it out and get it up for YouTube. I've been having a few medical issues, so I've um, bounced around to doctors and stuff. I'm still trying to struggle to find the time to. You didn't know what to do with the horns going out of your head, like are you yeah, to shave them down? Maybe <laughs> is that it? Hornectomy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you know, wishing you the best of luck with that, and then you know, keep us updated. And it's always fun to have you on, uh, George. We can see. Yeah, we, yeah. We basically. see where they were, can't we? Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't don't poke fun at that, John. Come on, I'm still I'm still struggling with all the whites in my beard right now. All right, it's okay. It's okay. He can't slap me. <laughs> George Brown. It, at it. least I'm not doing a ridiculous comb over or anything like that. Oh no! I told you guys we're gonna keep this positive, non toxic. Come on, George Brown. How you? Doing? <laughs> I can't remember. Oh, <laughs> I'm, getting, I'm getting, <laughs> getting so old. I'm forgetting what I did last week. So <clears throat> last um, week, you know, all my days are the melting usual, together. The usual old person stuff, you know, health issues, and car problems, you know, car problems, stuff, okay. computer, computer hassles. You know, I run, I run Linux, so I have especially intricate hassles. Very, very true. Very, very, very true. Well, I hope you, I wish you the best with all your hassles. Larry, how Thank you been? You. Oh, I'm fine. Um, probably the most boring of all of them. Do I just work and play games and watch TV and go to bed? And that's about it. You sound like, don't a, get out much. You, you sound like a guy in their thirties. You, you, you sound, <laughs> yeah. you're, you're reliving your youth already. That's great. Yeah. I'm, or at I did, least uh, middle age. <laughs> <laughs> I did a, uh, uh, disc golf league. I'm in a disc golf league at our, my local club and I'm in sixth place in our mm -hmm. novice section. And if you take out all the guys who are actually really, really good, who are just training all the new players, I'm probably like in the top five because that's only one place extra up. I'm happy with that. I'll take that. I think when Ooh. I'm done, I'm going to buy myself a nice little trophy. Who knows? We'll see. And put it in my desk and be like top five. I'll, I'll count that for something. Guys, we're going to be talking really quick about uh the idea of what would you do if someone you knew who was an atheist became a christian again and the idea is here's the story it's not so much that uh you're dealing with someone who is organically atheist you're dealing with someone who's left religion and was an atheist and like knew basically all the reasons that you guys would espouse for the reason why you left religion like they had the the proper reasoning it wasn't just i'm an atheist because i hate the the church it's more of like an atheist because i didn't have a good reason to believe in a god and i didn't want to continue to perpetrate not only the idea that i should pretend to know something when i don't have a good reason to believe it and likewise i just find it better to be a critical thinker rather than someone who's ardently following a dogmatic point of view and so as a result 
Um, I can't come to the belief of a religious system. And so I don't have to carry that label with me anymore. And then like um, um, a few months later, they become a Christian again. And they're like, hey, listen, I was listening to some pastors. I was listening to this guy. I read this book. I saw this YouTube video. And now I'm getting baptized next week. How would you? So uh, that actually happened to me. And I just wanted to know, um, for the sake of that person who's most likely watching this show, the fear that they have of interacting with other atheists is that they feel like they would be judged or that they would have arguments levied against them. And what would be the concerns that we'll do a roundtable? What would be the concerns that you would have? Larry, I see you uh, raised your hand. What's up? How would you react to someone who is a born again? Person? Well, it'd be why times two. I'd ask why twice. Uh, the first why is why did you become an atheist? Mm. And the second why would be what made you or why did you go back to Christianity or whatever religion it was? I would, I would like to know specifics on both of those. Right. So that, then I could evaluate those reasons myself. Right. And uh, if he had good reasons, then I might adopt them. If they had bad reasons, I might point out why they're bad. Larry, that is fantastic. Because honestly, if you hear good reasons, you might be a Christian too. Right. And if you, they aren't bad and you're actually friends, you're going to mm -hmm. say, hey, these are bad reasonings. Not the conclusion is bad. It's just the reasoning you're using is not as good. And I'm letting you know that as a friend. Right. That is fantastic. That was almost the exact same route I would take. John Richards, do you have a point of what you would do if you had an atheist become a born again Christian? Sure. Yeah. Mm. Well, first of all, my attitude is anybody can believe what they like, what they mm -hmm. like, you know, and and it's up to them. And I'm I'm very tolerant. I, I already live in a household with a Christian and a nominal Muslim, which is you know very unusual. They're part of my family here john just to add that i have uh, a muslim a jehovah witness and christian and sometimes in the, the same household in just my immediate family too it's wow. a very awkward okay Thanksgiving. okay can i raise you then you say you've got that i'll raise you two christians <laughs> <laughs> call him call i have a cat what else can i tell you <laughs> Who knows what he worships? All right. No, no, carrying on. Um, this is a peculiar American question because it doesn't happen. We don't have people, first of all, raised in Christianity. Secondly, they don't then need to become atheists because they've already been an atheist. Right. right. <laughs> and thirdly, they don't need to revert back to Christianity that they were never in in the first place. Mm. So, so we just don't experience that at all. But of course, as I said, if, if you anybody can do what they like, they have ownership of their, their body, their mind, and right. they can choose their, their preferences. I was speaking to my son, who's in New Zealand, only yesterday, and we were talking about this idea of there being an atheist community. And there is in the U USA, you know, there's the that there's a lot of it going on in austin texas for example but no. we don't have any need to meet up and say hello i'm an atheist like you <laughs> because in our part of the west it means i'm a human mm. <laughs> and that's not a big enough reason to form a community we need something else <laughs> you know like i like model railways or the soccer yeah. yeah yeah or fishing <laughs> or something like that so how do you explain generally the idea that you're the president of like the atheist community of UK? Do you just say I'm the president of human beings? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's a good point, of course. Well, although I've said that in, in general, there's a predisposition not to be religiously involved. Mm -hmm. There are a few people who are quite up in arms about the the way that the UK is still a victim of proselyte, proselytizing. Okay. Yeah. I, I tried to say proselytization, but it didn't yeah, come yeah, out yeah. right. That word, mm -hmm. anyway. Because in this building behind me, we have 22 bishops who are not elected. Wow. They're just there because they were chosen by the archbishop as his best friends wow. and they're there making laws for us and we don't like that 
And there Didn't are you do other... anything about that? Well, we're working on it. It's, it's taken a long while, but um, I mean, you know, it, it, it was 500 years ago that this place was set up and progress has been very slow. Right. Yeah. So there's other atrocities, like, for example, the, the laws that affect our children when they're being educated, which technically insist that they are, have a service every morning delivered to them of an Anglican nature, unless they are at a Jewish school or some other, you know, some other faith. So that's why there's a need, there's still a need for an atheist movement in the UK. And I'm lucky enough to have been elected the president. I'm going to poke at this one last time. Excellent. I'm wondering what if any of those bishops exercise the right that you seem to be offering your friend who became a born again Christian is that I have a right to believe whatever I want. I'm doing a good job making laws. Who cares what I believe? Let me just continue to do my job, both as a bishop and as a politician. And that's it. Like, why is it okay for this person to believe whatever they want, but you have an issue with me being a Christian and being in this office? And I don't mind them believing what they want. What I mind is them not being elected. Mm. It's a democracy issue. Right. Not a, okay. not a Absolutely. Issue. Okay, yeah. cool. And they should not be in there making laws. No. I dig it. No. I dig it. Yeah, if you're not an elected official, get out of the democratic position, institution that you're in right at the moment. Yeah. In fact, oh. Oh. if you want to be elected in this country, don't mention your religion. That's going to lose you votes. Interesting. I hope we get there eventually here at this place too. Uh, Slu, love to know, how would you react if one of your best friends who was an atheist became a born again Christian? Well, the, the first time you, you'd asked, I believe you said, what would your concerns be? And I, my concerns would actually be, is the church just feeding on that person's insecurities? Mm. Um, but as far as like questions asking, having to ask them questions or whatever about it, I would be curious, well, like Larry was getting at about the epistemology they're using right. to form that conclusion. Sure. So because it, it just doesn't seem likely. I don't know. I've never right. met anyone that was doing that other than public, more public figures that were grifting for a broader audience. Right. You know, I do feel sometimes that my immediate gut reaction when I hear that is sort of like my friend telling me, hey, I just became a heroin addict. It's like, how can I how can I treat that as a positive thing? Like, who are you hanging out with that's giving you those drugs? Don't you know that there's easier ways to feel good? or, 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 you know, ebb off some of the bad issues that you're having rather than going straight to heroin. There's like so many other cooler things. We could have gone for a walk. You could have got adopted a dog. You could have volunteered at an animal shelter. There's so many things you could do to contribute that gives you the same inherent good feelings than, you know, this yeah. organization that might just continue to keep piecemealing you and taking money from you. It's, it's like watching somebody with a broken leg, keep hammering their leg, kicking right. a hammer to their leg and yeah. saying, you know, this what do you think about this and it's <laughs> i you know i don't think that's a good way to to you know <laughs> be, right. treat yourself or be right. good to yourself <laughs> right it, it's sort of like a goblin moved to town and this is going to sound particularly racist for me against goblins but a goblin moves to town and the next thing you know your your best friend has a a, a goblin significant other and you're like i don't think I don't think this is going to work out long term. It's like, no, you don't know Mephestus like I am no Mephestus. It's like, <laughs> oh, no. OK, well, you know, you can believe what you want. I'm just wondering, like, what are your goals in life? And I know Mephestus wants you to do this goat sacrifice thing every hour. But like, there's not that many goats, dude. And you have other things you can do, right? Like, can we agree that maybe there's better ways to spend your time? But, you know, John, you have a point. They're adults. They can believe what they want. Larry, yeah. you have a point, too. If they can make a convincing argument, why not believe them, too, right? The thing yeah. is, I do feel like a lot of those people are scared yeah. about the what would happen if they left their Christian friends. And I think that that is much more obvious what would happen. Like they'd stop communicating with them. They'd be apostate. Or, or you know, maybe they stop believing in God, but they, they can't give up the idea that their soul may still be in danger in the afterlife. Exactly. You know, there's so it's much to it. There's not just one issue. Right. Uh, John Richards, I see your finger. What's up? Well, I want to pick up on that because Larry said he would ask two, two questions of why, why people change, why people got a belief, why people lost a belief, why they got back into the belief. Born again is, is not a British thing. We don't have born again here. 
-hmm. And but he's right. It, you shouldn't believe unless you've got reasons to believe. And interestingly, one the, the campaign that Atheism UK is embarking upon this year is a very good one. L listen, you know, thanks to the internet, we have all sorts of fake news, conspiracy theories, you know, and, and out and out lies that are put out, particularly by politicians and businesses who are trying to benefit from our ignorance because they're gonna, they can deceive us and make money very often. Well, that we have organizations, you have them in the US, to check the facts of these statements that these people are making. Our one is called fullfact.org, okay? And its remit is to check the, the information that's been sent to it by members. Anybody, any citizen can email them and say, look, somebody said this, is it true? And they will check whether or not, the, the, about the veracity of that claim, okay? At the moment, they're only dealing with claims made by politicians and commercial enterprises. We want them to check religious claims too. Mm -hmm. yep. Imagine that, because yeah. of course, the religious claims are causing harm to our society. They're giving people false hope of an afterlife. Mm -hmm. And some people take that so much to heart that they're prepared to kill in order to get there for their God. You also know there's this other weird thing too, I'll just throw out before we go to George, that being critical of religious dogma is inherently a liberal point of view, at least in the US, that seems to be the case. Yes. But when I was at CPAC, when I was literally at the convention for Donald Trump and Mike uh, Pence and listening to Pat, person after person and person wearing red hat who was willing to talk to me about their religious point of views and political views there at the event, there were groups who are conservatives who are also like, yeah, but I'm also an atheist too. And I hate the bum rap that uh, atheism has where it's like just a liberal thing. Cause like, I don't want to use faith. I'd like yeah. to get faith taken out of like uh, this party. I actually have no idea where this party is going right now, but I'd like to at least take the faith component out. I think that gets us back in the, the tracks yeah. of reality. So, yeah. you know, it, it's a, it's a thing that I think we would equal opportunity appreciate to have fact checked it once we have it because once it stops benefiting the people who get the benefit from it well, everybody gets a benefit absolutely george, we're, we're going to demand that they do it george brown organic atheist let me tell you something what if you had a friend who was an atheist who became a born-again christian how would you react well was this atheist formerly a christian or yes before being an atheist correct well, let's say you had a christian well, okay. friend who became an atheist and you're like yeah now that's so good for you i'm happy for you Anyway, there's not really well, anything. I it's not you. a matter of my my being happy or not for them, but I do support 100% support their their right to do it. Mm. You know, they. I mean, in other words, if, if I want them to respect where I am in my atheism, I have to be willing to respect where, where they are with their religious belief and and hold hold the belief myself. Sure. That whatever anybody else wants to believe is fine with me, so long as they don't threaten me in some way. Right, right, right. Then they don't have that right. And so, I mean, whatever, whatever they want to believe is is just fine. But I'm kind of, um, yeah. But it's you know, it, it's not my business. Um, as long as I feel that they're sincere in whatever they're doing. Yeah, or but try to. The, do pass their their beliefs into law so that i have to live under those beliefs yeah there well, now yeah, you, right, that, there's the line being crossed right mm -hmm. see that that's the, that's where i say they're threatening me by doing that right. that. and you know the one thing is oh sorry go ahead george but listen uh, the other thing i wanted to mention too what I, I i think it was you uh tyrone who who made the open the door for what i'm going to say is that when the person used to be a Christian, I'm going to assume that they weren't an isolated Christian, but that they were within a Christian community, meaning the parishioners at one particular church, the congregation. So they're accepted into an in-group. And uh, so I'm looking at the psychology of this. 
And I'm, I have a question about that, of course, is that when the person becomes an atheist and you, it was formerly part of that group, are they now going to be ostracized from that group? They're, they're going to be ostracized by every single individual in that group. Well, that, that person may feel lonely at that point and want to connect again with the acceptance from the community. And that may be a, what's pulling them back. I dig it. Anyway. I'm, I'm just, I, I, I don't have an experience that I can draw on to. I mean, I think it ties into the insecurities thing as well. It's almost a codependency type right. thing. It's also feels sometimes like from the atheist point of view of like, do I have to now be a therapist, like an armchair therapist to try to call this person back to atheism? Or am I like George, you said, just going to recognize that they have the right to believe whatever they want. And I'm going to trust that they are willing to use the best reasoning to get them to whatever path that they ultimately choose to walk. And if they don't have that reasoning, they at least recognize that and at least recognize that there's no good argument to believe the thing that they're believing. And at that point, that's as much as I can offer. And I think most people who know me or anyone else on the show know that that's what we're all about. But on that same line, we all on this channel have friends who are religious and it's not a big deal until their, their, the consequences of their actions start influencing our lives. And that's what we're trying to stop. We're trying to make it such that there is some yeah. you know, equality there. Larry, we're at the bottom of the half hour. I can't believe that question took up so much time. Sorry, guys. I know we're going to go into narcissism, talking about ourselves and how much we love ourselves and how nice yeah. uh, atheists just truly want to worship themselves. Anyway, All Larry, right. take us out. All right, sure. Stay tuned right here for the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio. 103.9 LPFM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We'll be right back after this short break. So, guys, I don't want to reveal who our funder is at the moment. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio, 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville for just a second. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 20th year. ASK has over a thousand members and we have weekly in-person meetings down in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Tap Room and Pizzeria. We start after work around 5.30 and go sometimes 7.30 or 8. Look for us inside at the high top tables or out on the deck. Usually we're the loudest and happiest group. Uh, we also have Tuesday evening Zoom meetings uh, you could like to join us, just email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. I would be happy to invite you or let you come into that. You can also find ASK on Facebook, meetup.com, or go to their website at knoxvilleatheist.org. Uh, you can also just Google Knoxville Atheist, just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and do a search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one. Star one. one. That's right. Wombat, where do you want to pick up? So I had this idea, and this also relates to the friend that I was having, who was going through this born-again Christian phenomena that doesn't happen in Britain, as John Richards was adamant to remind you of. <laughs> mm -hmm. But the idea is, you know, isn't there a better in-between if you're an atheist, then going straight back to religion, isn't there a better way to resolve some of the insecurity issues, Lou, that you might be referring to? Or, you know, uh, community contribution aspects like volunteer work? Do you really want to spend every Sunday sitting on a pew and feeling good about yourself? Isn't there a better way to feel? If you really need to worship something and you want to feel good about yourself, have you ever tried narcissism? And I was thinking that is possibly the best gateway drug outside of religion it's the nicotine patch of religion essentially because here's the thing you love worshiping things have you ever thought about worshiping you you love gods what if you yeah. treat yourself like a god narcissism it's it has no bad side effects people tend to love them people tend to vote them into office if you look at our all of our <laughs> leaders they all tend to be narcissists this is the potentially a career path in the making what do you guys think? I'd love to throw this out at you guys. Uh, Larry, what do you got? Well, first thing, 
you exist. <laughs> <laughs> that can be proven, you know, even yeah. the tart. I'll recognize that <laughs> five out of five atheists agree that you exist mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have and less I, problems since you with think this. you am <laughs> right we have way much less problems with your narcissism than we do with mm. your religious beliefs think about right. that think about all the mm. atheist friends you'll gather yeah that's right. wonderful mm. john richards do you have uh, a comment well yes i do sure we, we, sh we should all love ourselves to a certain extent mm. because we need that self-confidence mm -hmm. and the religious people know that that's why they try to destroy our self-confidence when we're children and make us subservient to him up there that's that's the first program yeah. of christianity islam many other religions that that they want to prevent youngsters from becoming anything other than somebody they can control. Right. And that's also the idea behind Born Again, linking back to the previous topic. It was Bishop Shelby Spong, I think he died recently, who said, Christianity is in the control business. Hmm. And that's why they want you to be born again, because it, you'd be a child again and therefore Ooh, control. Very you, good. Western religions, pretty much all of them yeah, yeah. Uh, are in the control business. Yes. We're in the business yeah. of control. Yes. Yeah. So don't Just submit like the video game. to it. Don't submit to it. Love yourself, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but don't abuse yourself. <laughs> right. And, you know, in some ways, narcissism can be a system of abuse because you're over loving yourself. And there's always yes. a limit to everything. Yeah. Right. But yeah. is it, uh, Slew, go on ahead, go on ahead. What's your thoughts on this? So this is my thought. I don't see that as narcissism to love yourself. Mm. Um, oftentimes, now this is what, I don't have a PhD in any of it or anything like that. You know, I'm not a, a psychologist, psychiatrist, or a therapist, but I've read up on the topic to help myself um, through some situations. I had a narcissistic parent growing up. Ooh. So this form of narcissism that you're talking about, I don't see it as narcissism. It definitely isn't as far as like the personality disorder and all of that goes. Sure. Um, because that's a very different thing. And that is based in like insecurities and things. That's to me, that's what Christians are already doing. Mm. They're already following this narcissistic God and then picking up those traits along the way. The I talked to Larry before a little bit briefly on Darvo, one of the tactics that narcissists use, which is deny, attack, reverse victim and offender role, which you can tie into Christianity pretty easily. They're denying all of the claims against Christianity. Then they're attacking, saying that it's the heathens and everything that are doing this, that that's the problem, that God being taken out of the schools and all of that. That's why kids are on drugs. That's why all this stuff's happening. Sure. And then they'll, you know, they'll uh, reverse the victim and offender role by martyring themselves mm -hmm. and saying that they're so persecuted for their bigoted beliefs and the controlling things that they're doing. Right. We're the minority, right? Yeah. You'll hear them say that. I'll, I have a quick thing to say about that. I love that you made the distinction between narcissism and narcissistic personality disorder because they are different things. And so like what I'm referring to is what's narcissist or narcissist. It's the Greek story of that person who was looking at themselves in a reflection and fell in love with the reflection. And the whole world treated that like it was a bad thing. But in my head, I was reading that story. I was thinking about it a few days ago. And it's like, listen, he's looking at himself in a mirror. He's not hurting anybody. He's not telling anybody else to look at him. He's basically yeah. just feeling good about himself. And who hasn't felt good, you know, or looked in the mirror and was like, hey, I got things to work on or I'm liking this part that I, you know, got like, Hey, I'm looking pretty good today. I feel good about that. Like, I, I love myself. Like that could be a good thing. Narcissistic person, a disorder though. That by is the way, distinct disorder. Go for it. By the way, that's mirror. There's two syllables. Mirror. It's a mirror, <laughs> right? All right. All right. All right. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> we've got, so in my head, narcissistic personality disorder is like the, the part where it's taken too far. And I don't like. I don't even I, I see it as a separate thing completely. Like it's, right. it's the thing of, um, we use the term so loosely and I hate that about our society well, that we use, yeah. we use this as a, a different term as what it was meant to be. Right. And it, it usually, like I said, it's these, these people are 
so insecure with themselves right. that they have to inflate that ego up and put on this show Correct. in order to feel good, you know, project it to everybody else so that they get to tell them how good they are and everything. So let me do, let me pick the point now. When I say, hey, try narcissism, I don't mean narcissistic personality disorder, though I do, I am aware that we live in a culture where the words are used interchangeably. I mean, it's more of like, why not take that attitude that you're putting to God, find the attributes that you like from Jesus or God or whatever, the being that you worship, and find them in yourself, and then love those parts about you. And I guarantee you, if you took some time to do that, you'd feel like you won't need to have to put invest all this love into something that won't love you back because you can love yourself and get the immediate feedback from that and i find that that is a much healthier relationship compared to what you're doing right now and then if you want to use it as a gateway to get to like maybe something like altruism or some other form of like service or community help or or improvement to not just you but the the environment that you take part in that could be a fantastic thing and then be careful because you can also do that too much and end up as a uh, narcissistic personality disorder person. I know George is chomping at the bit. What's up, George? Well, there's there's one element there that we're not taking into consideration, mm. which I don't know I, what's going on. Ty, I see your mouth moving and I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. I don't know why your mouth is moving then. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> Um, I, I don't understand. God works in mysterious ways, I think. And I see your mouth moving, and I don't know why. Anyway, um, uh, how do we offer ourselves the benefit of the afterlife, sitting at the right hand of God himself, smiling benevolently at us? Was that the question? <laughs> yeah, yeah. How do we... How do we throw that goodie out there or the equivalent of it i would say do it by being a narcissist in my head there's a lot of moral goods that come when you start thinking about what's in your best interest and i find like so you mean that almost done (laughs) any moral system is sort of based on what's in the interest of you and what you can do past that so when we look at selfish i feel like selfishness has like a really bad uh, connotation or or uh, rap, but like if you look at any system that's for society, right? Like rules to abide by, it's towards the benefit of that society. They find out what's they, what goals they want to have, and then build morale to support that. And so, if we were narcissistic in our more a little bit more in our thinking, if we really did care about ourselves and loved ourselves, maybe we'd actually have a codified set of rules that could lead us towards what's in our best interest. Since we love ourselves, how do we make those rules you know abided by what are the punishments that should come if those rules are broken and then what are the exceptions to the rules i think you can definitely build a moral system just built on narcissism that could actually be more beneficial than one that's strictly just a codified set of rules in a religious textbook slu what do you think i i think it's uh self-affirmation being secure with yourself I like and everything that you're kind of you're kind of touching on and i i agree with that and that's a lot of what satanism has to do Mm. with um with that our religion as well um the whole thing of lucifer you know rejecting the authoritarian position of god and everything and taking his own self into consideration with all of it Mm. that's that's part of the symbolism so yeah it's very much a thing along those lines larry what do you think well, I think it's important, especially if you're going to have a relationship with another person, that you have a good, healthy uh, self um, view Dean. of yourself. Absolutely. Uh, there's an altru- there's an old truism that says you can't expect other people to love you if you don't love yourself. That's but so I'll rephrase it, uh, I'll rephrase it a little bit and, and ask it as a form of a question: Have you ever been in a relationship with someone who didn't have a very good self image? Right. I was and that it's, person. It, it's it's not healthy for either person, right? And uh, it's kind of put offing as well. So cultivate that uh, that uh, good self image. Anyway, uh, there's a saying that I heard a long time ago that I thought was really pertinent. It says everyone should be their own best friend. Right. That yes. that voice that you're hearing inside your head, your voice is the most 
voice. I mean, you hear that more than anything else. Any other voice in the world that you have close relationships with, you don't hear their voice nearly as much as you hear your own. Right. So have a good self-image, be your own best friend. Right. And you may not even need to be a narcissist, but you can have a good self-image. You can have right. that confidence. You can right. and empower don't, yourself. And, and keep the negative self-talk to a minimum. You know, like, right. oh, you dummy, you lost your, you left your keys at work. Don't do that. Right. I also want to throw this out too. Abstracted enough to where you can still hear doubt, but doubt isn't controlled by the negative thought. Doubt is right. a tool that can be used to help you stay safe, stay, mm. you know, out of unnecessary arguments, avoid mm. stress, avoid needless risk. But it could be used by those negative voices to make you feel bad to the point where you stop listening to doubt. And the next thing you know, only you hear is confidence. And confidence is the one that's telling you to jump into that tiger cage and punch that cat because it looked at you the wrong way. <laughs> Doubt so it can, can always be used on your side. It just can be misused by things around it. So be aware of that. John Richards, it looked like he had something. Yeah, doubt is good. Everybody should be doubtful. In fact, I, I had a website. It's gone now, but it was called Doubters Club. Oh. And it, it, encouraged, it encouraged doubt because overconfidence is a dangerous thing. Because imagine... Uh, th there's an old Brenda Lee song. It's, uh, the lyrics go, Today I looked into my mirror, as usual, and told myself that you're still here, as usual. <laughs> you managed to rhyme those two words. But the thing is... <laughs> <laughs> the, the thing is, if you were looking into your mirror with a cutthroat razor... You know, if you don't yeah. have enough self-esteem, you're going to go like that, aren't you? What rhymes with mirror if you can't if you can't just slur the words together? Poetry is about the rules. Hearer, a right. hearer. <laughs> a hearer. A person who hears something. Oh, the, man, the Larry. Hearer. Don't, don't give John any more credence in front of us live on, on this show. Please, please. He's going to take it right to the bank. All right. Anyway, so it sounds like yeah, it does start with self-love. It does start with trying to reduce your own insecurities. And if you can do those first, you take power away from religion because what religion tries to offer you is essentially, and I, and I mean this in the nicest way to anyone who's listening to religion or who's religious, but like religion is essentially a problem that they give you and then mm -hmm. a solution that they don't offer. So they yeah. basically give you a problem that they you can't fix on your own and right. there's no meaningful solution to the problem because you're just expected to continue to carry this problem yeah. along with you right. as christopher sin. hitchens christopher of hitchens course. would say you're you're born sick and commanded to be well right right i and mean i go for i it. think that's part of uh religious trauma and everything is trying to work through all of that stuff right. later after coming mm -hmm. out of it and yeah. like you said larry that's something i had to work hard on with myself and you have to almost treat yourself like a child because it stunts you in a childlike state yes. to where you're, yeah. you're, you're still, you're beating yourself up as if you're the parent yeah. in the situation. Yeah. And it was everything just from spilling something or whatever that I would take it out on myself. And that is hard to, to work through and to, I had to. It takes practice, constant yeah. practice for, for a long time. And yet, uh, uh, having a kid and everything myself, that was something that helped me work on that too, because I had to break down, well, what, should I treat my child that way? Well, no, right. why am I treating myself that way? It right. doesn't make any sense. Right, right. Um, and not only that, but like, if that's ingrained in you over a period of years, let's say, you know, two decades, three decades, right? That's a very hard thing to not only give up, but it's a hard thing to learn yourself out of. You don't automatically yeah, it, start loving yourself by default. It's basically a Pavlovian response and you have to insert something else in that almost that same way to, right. to get your brain to, to go back where you need to be. And the, and the worst thing I feel like is, you know, atheism isn't a belief system. There is no God. There's nothing to fill that hole once you take God out. It's just the recognition that there is a hole there or, you know, for some people, there is a hole there. For some people, it's like, right. well, there never was a God there to begin with. Right. It's like uh -huh. in both cases. Yes. But there's no salve that atheism yeah, offers. But if, right? you, if you believe that uh, God is real then, and you talk to him all the time, uh, becoming an atheist is almost like losing a close friend. You mm -hmm. have to go through the stages of grief. Right. 
Right, right. And not only that, but it's so ingrained in your personality that if you are in a conversation with someone who doesn't believe, it feels like it's a personal attack against you and you don't have or their best friend to that. Yeah. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Or my best friend's like, that's someone who I love more than my mom. Mm -hmm. How dare right. you tell me that person doesn't exist, right? Mm -hmm. And then even when they realize that, it's the feelings are still gaping there. And so like, well, I have the deepest empathy because I've gone through that, right? The worst nice. scenario. Oh, go ahead, I, I would say this ties into the narcissism thing I was talking about as well, because that's you're basically God's flying monkeys at that point. If you've ever read about the things of narcissism, that's you. You're there's no um, there's no like borders there. There's no you aren't yourself. You're part of this other entity to do as you know God can do with you as He pleases and everything else. Um, it's very much still that same mindset of, of narcissistic personality disorder that would be in a, a person treating their children that way or whatever as well. Good point. Uh, it's almost like religion is narcissistic personality disorder, just codified with better it's, characters. In it's the same, the, the side effects of it that people go through are very similar as well. So right. it's, it, I oh. even recommend like books like the uh, Children of the Self-Absorbed by Nina Brown, mm. whenever I'm talking to people that are uh, coming out of religion or kind of on the border of things like that or struggling, um, because it is a lot of the same techniques and everything to come out of that. Yeah. If anything, it's like taught personality disorder to children at a very young age. Yeah. Yes. Larry, Larry. You had your hand up. I was just going to say that your friend that went back to religion uh, may have some of this underlying thing about grief and losing their friend and and just missing it so much that they wanted to go back and, and start believing again. Right. It could be part of it without having actually talked to him. I, I wouldn't know for sure, but I was right. thinking it might be. You know, it's a thing where it could immediately solve a lot of short term mm -hmm. problems that they're having. Right. It's just such right. a convenient way to get these problems resolved that it doesn't feel like it's a, a much bigger problem that they can't see. Yeah. Right. John, what do you think? Well, you, you talked about taught personality disorder. Mm. And, and it's a subservient personality that you're taught. And I feel increasingly sorry for you Americans because many of you are, are raised and sort of buried in this hole of belief. And then you have to clamber yeah. your way out of it yeah just and like that That's true. we call we call it child abuse over here you, yeah you've got to learn what boundaries are and everything yeah. Yeah. coming out of it because there's no boundaries in in religion there's no no I, yeah. I, I talked about this last week we've had literal pastors come to our elementary school to mm -hmm. preach because we would stop teaching things that right. you needed to learn like reading or math and yes. go to see a pastor who's local in the area. It's like, oh, a new pastor is opening up a new church. Would you like to have a classroom full of kids? Sure. We are going to take these kids and move them into this classroom so you can speak to them. And we just, that's that's that would be the unconstitutional. Curriculum. Yeah, yeah. That is that is something that's and I would feel happy because it would be my pastor for some days, and then sometimes it'd be someone else's pastor. But like, that shouldn't happen. And I hope it doesn't happen anymore. But I also know that it is still happening. Even on Australia, it's happening. It's a worldwide thing where we've just allowed ourselves to get doctrinated and make it so easy for that child abuse to just move generationally down to yeah. future generations. It's just, it happened in the public cycle. school that I, I grew up in. Yep. It, it was happening there. And it was usually, um, it seems like there's these churches that are like catch-alls for all of the uh, evangelicals and, and even Catholics and stuff in the area. They, they, promote this kind of watered down Christianity thing yeah. and it's usually pushed onto the kids and everything at these places so they'll have these fun events and everything to to kind of bring right. everybody in mm -hmm. and they can keep everything the the water is just murky enough to right. be able to seep their way in it's it is like living in a twilight zone episode where <laughs> Everyone is basically like in this strange fog mind, you know, cult from like an alien, just be like, everyone's just speaking to each other in zoning words and you move to town mm. and you're like, oh no, is everyone like this? Uh -huh. It's like, wouldn't it be easier if you were like us, Ty? It's like children of the corn. It's just this weird mm -hmm. situation where of course they wouldn't see it as a problem until they leave the system. Then they realize it's a problem. 
but it's so big that they can't fix it. Not only that, but they don't have the faculties to deal with not having that problem anymore that they just go right back to being in the problem. It's a yeah, Shakespearean We were describing tragedy. cults, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, which you know, religions are large cults. They are. They are. Well, I mean, they essentially what a cult and a religion is is just what religions call each other, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for right. the most part. For the most part. I think it for me, growing up in a rural area, it bled over into society as well with things like, uh, you know, they would kind of guilt and shame parents if they didn't beat their kids, right? Because right. that's you know that's something that's it's biblical. There's no other real good explanation for it because psychology says it tends to differ on that subject and yeah so george brown final thoughts on this what do you think about this whole discussion we're having well i'm i'm mostly listening you know because i wasn't raised this way and i think that you all have some some special knowledge that i don't have from your own personal experience so i'm just reflecting on what you're saying I think it's so fortunate that you weren't raised this way and also that you're at the age where you are now where it was never a temptation. It was just commonsensical not to have to do it. And I think if we just gave people the opportunity to not be indoctrinated and let that stick long enough, they'd, they'd develop the faculties to, to avoid that, I think, on their own. But we live in a society where- Well, that's a good point. Yeah. I, that's a good point, I think, because um, I just had an opportunity last week to converse with a healthcare person I'm involved with, and um, I was unable to communicate with him. I, mm -hmm. I was um, I was trying to use logic, and he was coming back at me with slogans. Yeah, yeah, you know, that, yeah. that he believed and and. Um, yeah, and, and so, so I, I don't know how to establish communication. And here we are in a democracy, and um, it's important to me that other people know how to think critically, and I don't know how to make that happen. I'm, I'm at a loss. It's a language barrier, isn't it? Mm, yeah, but it is. Can, can I just say that this weekend is Easter weekend, and on Good Friday, legend has it that... Um, a certain person was crucified, and then on good on Sunday, Easter Sunday, he rose from the dead. Well, I'm doing a debate on that Ooh. on Good Friday. I'm debating Nick Peters, who, if you don't know of him, Google him. You'll find out that um, he's he's a, a long-standing apologist. And the topic of the debate is: Did Jesus rise from the dead? Mm. And it's being hosted by David Poppyden on fermenting opinions channel on youtube Not bad. i haven't found out the time yet but uh that look out for that you'll be able to see us debate live on youtube very cool and then also free thought productions uh what the hell oh excuse me what the heck what the what in the world is that what are do you mind just informing plugging on that one more time john well sure free thought production is my channel right and there's lots of shows on there i've been doing it now for a couple of years and there's hundreds of literally hundreds of, of my videos up there. And I'm very I'm very proud of the fact that it's growing and I've now got a, a producer. And so this this is this is the future. Nice. <laughs> and then slow, anything that you'd recommend we check out before next week? Um, well, hopefully my podcast, uh, Skeptical Satanist. I'm on um, YouTube right now. I'm working on getting I'm hoping to get content up on Patreon and get things set up a little bit better than what I do right now. Um, but yeah, check us out there and on Facebook and I even have a discord server up too. So. Very cool. I'm also going to throw this out. You said rural before that. I think England has as one syllable. Is that accurate? Is that accurate? <laughs> do you guys say rural? How do you say rural? Rural. R rural. Oh, <laughs> overemphasis. All right, Larry, why don't you take us out? Okay. Uh, my content can be found at digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button. Uh, you can find our radio show archives there. There we have like 270 of these shows there. Uh, go check them out. Uh, Atheist songs are also available on digitalfreethought.com, and we have many articles on the subject of atheism. 
My YouTube channel can be found by searching for Doubter5 or Larry Rhodes. And my book, Atheism, What's It All About, is available on Amazon. By the way, if you're a member of clergy, a preacher, imam, or pastor, priest, uh, but have come to see that the claims of religion are not justified, there's help for you at The Clergy Project. That's clergyproject.org for more information. Thank you for joining us for the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, you can find this show on Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, and podcasts everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. And if you're watching this on YouTube, be sure to like and subscribe. Remember, everybody is going to somebody else's hell. The time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real. Until then, don't sweat it. Enjoy your life, and we'll see you next week. Say bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. Bye. Hail yourself. <laughs> <laughs>